Good morning. Thank you all so very much for honoring us by being here this morning. If you would, we would love to start in song. Can you stand and join us, please? Thank you, David. Thank you, University. How are you? How? Hi. Oh my God. How are you? Good. Good morning. Thank you for choosing to be here. Are you here? Yes. Are you ready? Yes. Get ready. It is Martha Creek Sunday. So, whoa. We are so blessed. So let's breathe together, shall we? Just feel the energy already stirring in this place. Feel the photons, the light of our being. They're dancing. We are emitting the light that we are. We celebrate that light. We celebrate the opportunity to be here, to be together, to shine forth into this world. Each and every moment, we are blessing, we are blessed. We are grateful, and so it is, and so it is, and so it is. All right, together with me, amen. Thank you. Good morning and welcome. And also a welcome to our live streaming and Facebook communities. Welcome. So as not to interfere with our live streaming, please turn your cell phones at this time completely off. We thank you. If this is your first time at Unity of the Palm Beaches, please raise your hand so we can welcome you. If you have not already done so, Please stop by the greeters table in the foyer to pick up a welcome packet and fill out the information card for a free CD of today's meditation and message. We appreciate that you have chosen to spend your Sunday morning with us and invite you to join us after the service in the social hall for refreshments and again, welcome. We'd like to remind you to please review the announcements in your bulletin and feel free to take the flyers home. You will also find Unity's five basic principles in your bulletin, which are the very foundation of the Unity movement, as well as forward. So if you would, let us together bless our youth as we step out into their experience this morning. I see you generating energy. Thank you. 
because they really need it. <clears throat> okay. <laughs> if you will share the blessing on the screen together. Children, you are loved, special, and important. As a divine child of a loving creator, you are loved just the way you are. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Good morning, Taylor. After Easter, Reverend Taylor will be having a surgery to replace the aortic valve in his heart. Um, he has an excellent surgeon who will take good care of him and send him back to us feeling better than ever. He is our minister, he is our family, and we will go through this together as a family. We expect that he will need up to six weeks of recovery time, and we are so incredibly blessed that during his absence, Trish will be covering for him as she always does so beautifully when she's on. He's also blessed starting on Tuesday and she's going to be very capable of working with the staff to carry on the business of the church while Taylor recovers. So Taylor will deliver the Sunday service for the next four Sundays with the last story about to be revealed to us. That same spiritual certainty moves me through my day. My intentions may not be revealed. My body and mind may still seem intense. The power that is my true identity. And, and please join me. omnipotence of my sacred self. Have a great Sunday. In unity, we acknowledge and we celebrate the power of prayer. We acknowledge that prayer is how we align with and affirm the absolute truth of what God is. We pray not to change outer conditions, rather we pray to change consciousness, and so to change ourselves. We allow for a change in our thoughts, feelings, and attitudes, thus deeply knowing our connection within the Spirit of God. Our prayer chaplains this morning are Sarah and Pat, who will be bringing up our prayer box that contains your prayer requests and lighting the Christ candle. Our chaplains hold these requests in prayer for 30 days and then send them to Unity Village for an additional 30 days of prayer. There is a prayer box with request forms located in the lobby. Prayer chaplains, please come forward.
right here, right now. I invite you to take the deepest dive ever into your God. Into an experience of God, a presence of God. Be aware of being breathed. So we don't have to do even that. That is being done for us. Eternity. And open at the top. At one with all that is. Assurance. Get a sense of feeling and being in assurance. Even when the challenges, obstacles, things we don't prefer, things we don't want, things that we think shouldn't happen, even and especially in those times, get a sense of what it would be like to meet those times in assurance. Being assurance. Being assurance for your own soul, for your own spirit. And then offering assurance to our fellows, to others. And get a sense of how being assurance could change, does change, will change the whole of humanity. My being in assurance, your being in assurance, the contribution that makes. And imagine a dark spot, maybe a patch of fog, and be and as Paul said in the scripture, 
I consider the sufferings of the present time are not worth comparing with the glory about to be revealed. How would it be open to, ready for, looking for, finding the glory of all that is revealed? So as we go deeper in, active, aligned, atoned with Creator, the Spirit, get a sense of this spiritual certainty. And how we can move through this day and through any circumstance in assurance. Renewed, reawakened, and a deeper awareness of our true spiritual identity and the power of this identity. We thank you. We thank you for this solid foundation, this assurance. Is always, always, and always accessible. And we begin again to live in that way. Be it so, so be it. Amen.
all those days watching from the window all those years outside looking in all that time never even knowing just how blind i've been now i'm here blinking in the starlight now i'm here suddenly i see starlight now he's here and suddenly I know if he's here it's crystal clear I'm where I'm meant to go and at last I see the light and it's like the fog is lifted Everything seems different now that I see you. Now that I see. I say that concludes the service. <laughs> so get a sense of this if it's true. That we have within me, within you inherently, not from anything outside of you, not from somebody, not from something, not from a profession, not from a degree, not from a legacy, that you have within you every God-given thing there is to have. Is it true or not? Yes. Is that true? Yes. Okay. Then what responsibility comes with that? Because it means a lot of responsibility. That means I can no longer be a knucklehead. <laughs> oh, no. I'm going to have to surrender my knuckleheadness. I may have to reduce my tantruming 10 or 20%. Anybody here still tantrum? Us spiritual types are much more sophisticated than ours. We just give them the look. We kill them with kindness. We teach them a lesson. We gossip a little here and there. We can have this just a little moment of true confessions without shame without guilt, without blame, just dip back in there and see how does it look when you're in a tantrum? How does it look? I wish you could see your faces. <laughs> well, that's the reason not to do that. That's the reason to do less of that. It squelches my spirit. It dims my luminosity. So then we wake up pretty charged up. We get to come to a 
beautiful ministry, a, a be to be a part of shifting the world, to be a part of a movement committed to making a world that works for all. To be a part of something mighty to do that. And our luminosity dials up. And then they want to invite us to their party. It's like, you know, when we're awake, you'll realize you've been spared from something. <laughs> you cannot have a tantrum anymore. It's like they didn't invite me. It's like, whoosh. But what else could I do with my time? What else would I do if I was going in the direction of my own goals for my own life? Then I'll get invited some. I won't get anybody relate. If you got just a hair or two of that left. After all I've done. After all I've done for God. After all I've done for them. Could you throw me just a little piece of appreciation? It's like, no. <laughs> they cannot. And if I let my peace hinge on waiting for them to appreciate me, who just stole my peace from me? Who just sabotaged my peace? Me. This is good news. They call it on Sunday the gospel. We're here to receive the gospel. You know what the gospel means? Good news. We have some. My peace does not have to hinge on them. My peace or that in situation or that job or whether traffic flows. Or what the heart needs. Now no sane person's going to wake up and go, oh, I can't wait to run to a hospital and get my heart operated on. Right? But is it going to happen? Any of you been around that mulberry bush a time or two? Any of you had a few surgeries? Wasn't pleasant for some of us, but it wasn't fatal. So it was a repair of everything we've referred to, everything that has been part of a spiritual practice, a spiritual groundedness. It's now's the time, folks. Now's the time to like get in there. So I say whatever your book is, if it's the Bible, get in the Bible. If it's Course in Miracles, get in the Course in Miracles. If it's the Bhagavad Gita, get in there. Twelve steps, big book. Do get in whatever your book is and get really close to that teaching. And continue sending these roots down. We are the ones that have been called here, appointed here, illumined here in our own God-given luminosity to be the light unto any darkness, any fear, any, any kind of wobbliness for the world, for our families, our communities. And if anybody else could do it, they'd be here. <laughs> So guess who? Guess who? So get a sense of this in your own being. I am here now. I am here now. I am here now. I am here now. And get a sense of this. I know who I am. See if you can say it. I know who I am. I know whose I am. So I know who created this. I know what created this. So I know the infinity of that, the eternity of that. And even when I can't see it in the physical, when I can't make, cannot make sense of it in the physical, I refer to something that I know to be true. So my assurance doesn't come from this, but from something that is unseen, but something deeply, deeply known. Deeply known. Keep saying it if you can. I know what I am. I know what I am. And I know how I serve. I know how I serve. Now get a sense of that in your body. Get a sense of being this. And then any fear that comes in, how would you meet that fear? 
more faithful? How else could you meet that fear? Because you, you realize fear is going to come. You know how you know? You have a pulse. We didn't get to pick on this one. So fear will still arise. Fear will still come. It's a part of our humanness. It's a part of the human experience. It's very um, important, actually. It's what keeps us from touching a hot stove and other things like that. So fear will arise. Now, how can I be with fear differently? How can you be with fear differently when it arises? What's something you can do differently? Pray. Contra, maybe. If I was in assurance. Yes. Ask for help. Grow myself up. How would I be as a grown-up in this? If I didn't revert and regress to a small child or a three-year-old here, how could I be with this from more of an adult self than a small child self? And then equipped, understanding that fear will arise. That there is a or yet to be determined, yet to be discovered, yet to be determined in me because I've been patterned to be with it the same old way. And we're still being with it the same old way as dinosaurs were with it. It's, as, it's that old. This animalistic, regressive brain that when we get afraid, we fall off into a big old repertoire of three. That's the fight mechanism. Or to shut down, go silent, give them the silent treatment. Anybody here relate? Yeah, probably whoever lives with you knows, all of, knows how to do this well. Because <laughs> we've, we've had to develop some coping Light. And I'm out of here. Ain't worth it. Can't do it. Just can't do it. So if we grew that up a little bit and said, wait a minute now, that's below the line activity. That's animalistic, dinosauric activity, reptilian activity. So if I just inched on up here, if I just inched on up here into the frontal brain, the cortex, the, the cognition, that's Equipped for innovation, resourcefulness, problem solving, rationale, logic, possibilities. What would it be like to come from that place? You've had to do this already in your life. Every single thing you've experienced required us eventually to use this. How to tie our shoe. How to learn the job. How not to bite and scratch people <laughs> when we got mad at them. So we have some practice of being up here. Just get a sense of what it would be like to live from here. That we're so kind of over this old, worn out, regressive, aggressive pitiful, can't do, below the line activity, and then more called to, excited about, willing for, determined to shift the world, to consciously evolve. That the power then is within you. It's one of my favorite Myrtle <laughs> Fillmore quotes. Do y'all know about her? How she was slight as a woman and was sick and was going to die and then didn't. For a while. And she said she changed her mind about it. That she had a mind change about it. That she saw another possibility for herself. And then went in the direction of that possibility. And it's quote.